Okay, everyone, we're going to crank it up for the final, the, <laughs> the home stretch here. Um, I had told you that I was finished with that subject of those pitfalls, but uh, there was a couple things I wanted to add, and uh, part of it was stimulated by a conversation I had with Taya, sort of off the record. But I just wanted to give you this illustration. It was like very interesting. Um, here's a situation. I was in a church, and it was a church, a uh, smaller church, and it was one where the pastor's wife had a very significant administrative role. Uh, she was, I, I don't know if the title was ever given to her, uh, but uh, uh, she was basically, certainly the office manager would apply to what she was doing, church office manager. And uh, she was very good at it. She was a very gifted individual. Um, and what happened was, is that a decision was made by the pastor to raise the tuition in the Christian school. Okay? And the pastor's wife, um, I believe, disagreed with the decision but she did what she was told, and she started implementing the decision, okay? Just because she was just doing, I mean, honorably. I mean, you know, okay, I got overruled, and she went ahead and did it. And then I had a rule in the office. I forget exactly. I think I was probably like the assistant pastor or something. And I found out about this uh, tuition increase. And I think from her, and... It, it had a especially large effect on families with a number of children in the church. So I look at her in horror, and I say, my gosh, this family, their tuition is going to double if we go ahead and do this. And uh, she says, yes, that, that, that was the decision. you know." And uh, so I go to the pastor and say, did you realize the effect of this decision? And he said, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize that. Of course we're not going to do that. So then he changes the decision, and then she finds out, and she's there looking like, you know, just, just in a strange place. I don't know how to describe it, just in a strange place that she did what the pastor said against her better judgment. Someone else went to him and got something changed, and then she just had to eat that whole situation and just, you know, bite her tongue and go ahead and function. And uh, again, that's, I'm just... I remember that now, and then just putting it out there. These are the things that can happen. Um, and just, I had said earlier that when, like, someone gets permission to do something, and, or it's, it seems, they think they had permission, or it seems like they give them, give them permission, but they start to walk over different policies or procedures with Pastor Schaller's name on it. I came up with this, this phrase I have with Pastor Lynch. It goes like this. <clears throat> It says, no one ever told me to stop doing my job, okay? So if someone has permission to do something, Pastor Schaller approved it, okay. I know what my job is. It's to cover the financial end of it. What's the budget? Well, Pastor Schaller said to do it. That's, I'm, I'm sure he did. And I would like to know, you know, can you put together a budget for me and we'll talk about it? It's, it just, just because the pastor's name gets attached to it doesn't mean that there's a, you know, a free reign to do whatever you want. But people, you know, sometimes you're outside the organization or at certain places, they don't realize that. And, and so we've, we've learned how to handle those situations. And, uh, you know, sometimes we'll go back to Pastor Shell. Oh, by the way, you told this person they could do that. Just so you know, um, there's this policy, A, B, C, and D, that they're going to have to, you know, work with or around or through to make it happen. And nine times out of ten, he's fine. And the tenth time, he says, just make it happen. I don't care about that stuff, you know. So I just want you to know that. And if you have a sane, healthy organization, you, you ought to be in, living in security. You know, and you've got some area of delegation affected by somebody else. You know, um, uh, you know you're, you're the guy who locks up the building at 2 o'clock every day. Well, Pastor Shally said, you know, pastor of the church said we could run this program. It goes till 3. Okay, well, let's talk about that. Not, I got to get out of the way and, and start, you know, messing with my my whole delegation. But there's an order for this because I, I didn't hear that from the pastor. So let's let's talk about that. All right. Now we're going to go on to this final subject here. 
I think this could run short, but I don't mind getting at you guys out of here early because, as I say, I can't believe you sit here for three hours after work. <laughs> okay. Um, let me tell you where we are in the course. Um, I have covered uh, a lot of this interpersonal relationship, managerial part of the course. I'm very happy the way it's gone. You guys have been very kind to me, but it just seems like we have grace to do this this year. Um, there's a few real hard things we're going to get to, like finances, which we won't spend a lot of time on that, but we're very important stuff. We'll talk about insurance. We'll talk about liability. We'll talk about actually the nuts and bolts of, of incorporating an organization in the United States. Um, before we get to that, I'm, we're going to have a couple classes. Uh, we'll, again, we'll see how much time it requires, but we're going to start talking about affiliation. Um, we're going to address this so-called uh, doctrine of spiritual fathers. Um, but I kind of want to introduce a concept which I think you're aware of, but I just want to put it out there because I think it will edify and help you. And this is the, uh, the topic is this. It's that of voluntary accountability. Okay, I think I was patient enough, so Aniko can actually read this. All right, that was written in large letters for you, okay? And voluntary accountability is exactly what it says. On I volunteer, or of my own free volition, not because of requirement, uh, but because of my heart and for the glory of God, I offer accountability to the people that I'm responsible to. And I would say that voluntary accountability is like, if you can get that um, operating in your organization, in the church, people are doing it because they want to, not because it's, I mean, I suppose the other side of it would be like enforced discipline or something. Um, but if you can get this functioning, it, I just believe that there's great, great power in it. Now, I want to put it out there. I'm not sure I can define it very well. Uh, and that's why this section could go short and you guys could be out earlier than you expected. But um, I have had conversations with Pastor Lange over the years about, I'm, I'm very sensitive to um, me making sure I'm putting in a full week's work and more. And why do I want to do that? Because I'm, you know, the church is you know, paying me a good amount of money um, so I can live. Um, and, I'm, and, and you guys, the people in this room are paying my salary. And I know how hard you guys are working in the course of a week. So I'm accountable to you. That's one level of it. I'm accountable to God, to a calling. And then you know, I also know how hard the people above me are working. You know, And I, I want to be responsible to them. And I love what I'm doing. It's like I like I'm not trying to get out of it. I, I want to go forward in it. So I'm, like I say, for those reasons, I'm sensitive to putting in a, in a full week of work and then some. And for a number of us, and I don't, I'm not trying to create an exclusive group at all, but I'm just saying for a number of us, there's things that we do that um, can be considered like because I, as an ordained pastor, there's things that I do that's assisting the church and might fall into a gray area. Is this part of my job or is this just something doing, I'm doing on my own? Okay. Uh, Wesley Benoit is not in that situation. Not that you won't be, but you, you punch a time clock, right? I mean, you, you fill out a time card. He's paid by the hour. His duties are crystal clear. Doesn't mean he's not kind to people, not, doesn't mean he's not filled with the Spirit and ministering to people and all that he does. But if he were to, uh, you know, get off at work at five and, or whenever you get off work and, oh, Pastor Schaller asked me to visit somebody today, 
that would be volunteer, and it would be crystal clear. Um, I think of myself in a little bit of a, diff possibly in a different situation. I'm teaching this course. I, as I told you, I do um, you know, some a limited amount of counseling for couples that are to be married. There's different things I do that can bleed over. You know, and they, do I count this or don't I count it? And on the one hand, I'm, you know, it's, it's all free, and I, I don't want to think that way, but I do. So I, that's just all to introduce that I've had numerous, a number of talks with Pastor Lange, like, what, how do you want me to do this? And especially once I start teaching this course, it's like my world comes to an end because I just, it, this takes a lot out of me. And I don't, I don't mean, I mean, I enjoy it. I love it, but I'm expending en energy right now. I go home dehydrated. <laughs> I go home tired. Um, I come in the next day and I'm not 100% because I'm still recovering from this course and I got to prep for it. I think about it all week, you know, getting, you know, getting ready. You know, when am I going to spend some time and make sure I got something from God? So what Pastor Lange has said to me, Pastor Taggart, uh, you manage your schedule, you manage your own hours. As long as your responsibilities are covered, do what you got to do. That's, that's been the, the definition to me. So, um, okay, I got that, Pastor Lance. Thank you. But still, I'm, I'm saying this to myself. I don't say this back to him. I'm not just, I, maybe you're happy, but I got people working around me and for me that I'm requiring something of. So I'm accountable to them also. And for that reason, I tend not to come and go as I, feel, as I want, but I tend to try and exercise some sort of communication and life with my team. So today, um, I'm leaving the office probably around 2.30 because I've got to get out of there and get to a place where I can just think about this stuff. So on the way out the door, I tell Tootie, Tootie, I'm... I'm going, to go, I'm going to leave early today. I'm going to go prep, prep for my class. I tell Yulia I'm leaving early today. I've got to prep for my class. I don't think I said that to Debbie. I don't even think I said hi to, about goodbye to tell you. You were in there working, and I just, your role's different than these other ladies, and you're not a, you don't work as much. So I didn't think it was necessary, but I could have. You know, In a sense, I want you to know it. I don't come and go as I please. And then on my way out the door, I stuck my head in Pastor Lange's office. I said, Pastor... Yeah, I, you know, I've been doing this all semester, but I never really told him. And I said, but, you know, by the way, I'm leaving. Um, I've been cutting out early on, on Monday afternoons to get ready for my class. So he said, great, cut out, you know. And I didn't have to say that to him. Um, he does not require that from me. Um, in a sense, he could care less about it. But the fact that I'm doing it, it removes doubt in anybody's mind about what's happening. And I did it voluntarily. I don't want him to call my office at 3 o'clock, not get an answer, and wonder where Pastor Taggart is, because it could hit him that way. You know? I also, even though he said, Pastor Taggart, keep your schedule, do what you want to do, I don't quite trust myself, because I know my own tendencies. Uh, the, the, you know, it's, we got nice weather out there. I could, I could start, you know, in my own mind coming up with stuff. Jeez, I wouldn't mind. I owe it to my wife. I owe it to myself. I need the exercise. All That stuff can all get going. But I know how hard I'm beating the people in my office to churn this work out. I know what Yulia's doing in the course of a week. And I just, I don't want to go there. And I don't, and, and again, I've, it's not that way today, but there's been times when this place was a ghost town at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, going back ages ago before any of us were born. And I just, I, I just want us all given 100%. And that, that thing of voluntary accountability, when we have that communication with the people who are over us, giving them more than they require because we want to, it just it, it does something for the people, for the organization. It's an absolute statement that I have nothing to hide. My life is an open book. Anything you want to know, I will tell you if you're asking it. Now, of course, people don't want to know, you know certain things, but you know what I'm saying. But even, you know, even last, I, I think the last time I talked to Pastor Lange about it was, Pastor Lange, here's what's going on. I'm coming into the spring, 
and this class affects me, you know. And then, you know, also my younger daughter has, has volleyball, which takes something out of my life to get her to those things and tournaments and everything. And then we've had kind of a workload uh, on us also. I forget what's going on, but we got this, you know, you're aware of some of those issues, just certain things that's required of me. And so I did have that conversation with him up front, and it just it, it cleared the air. And I would just, um, okay, so I'm paid here. Now, let's switch it over to the weekends, okay? I am not paid to go out on the bus on Sunday morning. You know what I'm saying? We go out, we go through East Baltimore, we go through neighborhoods, pick up people, bring them in. It's, it's just, I just love it. I'm with the, the newly engaged Bob Lindahl and uh, Pastor Mike Williams, and we're out there. And um, I... You know, I do, I do not call. I mean, if I, if I forgot and I had to, I would do it. But I just will not call Pastor Mike on a Friday night or a Saturday night and say, I'm not coming tomorrow. And I definitely will not call. Unless some emergency comes up, I just, when I get out of bed on a Sunday morning, my life is not, I cannot do what I feel like doing, you know. And I think there was one time in the last probably five years, where there was a bona fide family emergency, there was something maybe going on with one of my children, required my attention. Pastor Mike, family emergency, I'm not making it today. And I was fine with God and with him with it. But that's, and, and you, you, you folks who are running outreaches, you have team members, they don't have to come. You'll survive without them. But it's like, when they just no-show, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's like, you know, you, it's like inviting someone out on a date and you show up at the restaurant and the other person doesn't show up. It's just a bummer. You know, why, why like we had an agreement, you're not here, can you at least give me the courtesy? It's like, it's like, it's like bums, you know? And then on the other side of it, we do communicate ahead of time, this is what's going on, this is what's happening. It just, it, it clears the air and it really just, like I say, frees up. Um, uh, I don't wanna get weird about it, but I just think that there's a spiritual power there that is enabled when we have that type of relationship with each other. And, and I would even extend it. I mean, I, I would say, and I'm, I, I hope I'm doing this right, but forgive me. We got young men in this, in this room. We got Grant, he's awesome, you know, and I don't know what God has for you, but there's like potential there. We got Andy, he's awesome. We got Wesley, we got these young guys who are like amazing, you know, and it's like the, the um, if someone doesn't pick up the baton and go with it, okay, there's a generation that is like getting old and is like dying off, and it's like we are counting on somebody else, you know that you know, and, and, and we, we hear some of them, you know, you know Justin, you know Ben Tang, he was awesome the other day, you know, of course, he's probably in his, you know, he's not, he's got a family, he's a little bit older, but it's like the, these people are like gold because they, you know, their leadership, it's not everything, but it's an awful lot. And you know, we got to be raising up these pastors. And, if, and, and this would go to everybody, but I'm, I'm especially just targeting young people that think they might have it. You know, maybe, God, I would be a pastor someday. If you can just learn this exercise of voluntary accountability, and I don't mean you know, all of us, and just put yourself in a place where you initiate so that there is an open door of communication with you and the pastor who's responsible for your life and interests and you making it, it might, you might get communication once in five years. I mean, don't, don't expect to go bowling or windsurfing with Pastor Shouter, but <laughs> the door is open, and you get in front of him, and he knows he can talk to you, and maybe you're at raps and stuff, and it just gives a place of communication that might, at a key time, just direct your life. Like, Pastor, I'm thinking about asking this girl out, you know, and he might say, well, you know, and that, you know, it just might be enough to know I, I got to hear from the Holy Spirit and just save me from getting involved with something that might, that might be a real detour for me. And so that, that's what I believe it does, you know. And, and when my children, like here I am, I'm a father, okay? I've got children. I've got two girls, amazing girls, and, and just very, very blessed. Um, if they come to me and ask me, I will give them advice that in some cases may tr save them tremendous hardship, you know. When they come to me and ask me, I do not tell them what to do. I go this way. Here's a consideration for you. 
if you take if you make this decision this could happen so if you make this decision and this does happen and before god you still made the right this the right decision that's all i mean you you went out with both eyes open that's all i can ask okay but if they don't come to me it's going to be very rare where i go to them and step in especially for my daughter who's going on 20 to step into her business where i'm not invited it's, I'm, I'm very, very slow to do that, okay? And why don't I? No, because I don't know God's will for her life, and it's her decision to make anyway, and I don't want to be a meddling parent, you know? And I, and I know, I also know, Pastor Ben, different cultures are different. You know, I, I know things can be very different in other parts of the world, and, and I, I, some, in some ways I wish things were different here. You know, I, you know, just having been around a little bit and seen some things, I think, if parents had more say into who people choose for spouses, this society would be better off because I think you know, mistakes get made because we have this thing that's we don't touch people's free will. But that's where it is. You know? So I guess I'm just giving a few illustrations to make the point about voluntary accountability and what it is, and especially as we get into talking about spiritual fathers and then really how we view affiliation this becomes key because I, I, I view it really as sort of like the, uh, the pillar on which the whole thing stands, you know, and, and we'll, we'll start getting into that next class, okay? Because uh, I don't want to introduce a new subject tonight. So I'm letting you out 23 minutes early. If you feel ripped off, tell me. I don't, I don't but I just, I just also know you guys have long days. <laughs> okay, all right, that's what I wanted to hear. Okay, so... Father, bless us as we go. Amen.